Oh, it's okay. I need no introduction, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, Levy. Um, uh, Self-control so My name is June Kim, and I am the Executive Secretary for the World Hunger Poverty and Sustainable Agri Development Programs for the United Methodist Church's Humanitarian Relief and Development Agency um, for United Methodist Humanitarian Relief. Anyway, regarding this issue, and I've had the, again, um, real privilege of being able to be in a context of working on programs and along with peoples for um, alleviation of poverty efforts. So of course does humanitarian aid, of course we do disaster relief, but a lot of it is centered on global development and how do we do that. And the theme of promoting power of people, and I have my mentor right next to me, Marta, who said, who taught me very early on, you can't teach people empowerment. Either you are yourselves be empowered. So what we are hoping to do is set up and create the environment in which the people feel like and have the confidence to stand up for their rights. And, and I've seen uh, in a lot of our work, we do programming that hope, and we hope will be sustained. And um, so many NGOs internationally are doing work and development, quote unquote development work, but at the heart of it all, it seems like they're in the business for their own sustainability, for the existence of their organizations and their staffing. And so, you know, I've been taught, you know, so many NGOs are in the, uh, in the habit of the drop and go policy. So you get money from uh, private donor agencies or a lot of our government agencies, aid agencies, and they go to a country, set up office, you know, they hire expats, they hire some locals, and they are there until they spend the money and they go. Mm. And then what happens to the people that are left? And we criticize those people that are left, say, you are becoming dependent on the aid. When who is delivering the aid? It's us. And so we talked about moving, uh, what I hope for, at least for you know, our United Methodist Church and the faith-based organizations, how do we teach our constituents in the developing world that is, you know, charity is more about us feeling good about doing what Jesus would like us to do, but to move, be, move them beyond charity. What is our responsibility as the people living in the developed world that it's, it, it is our responsibility? And how do we break that cycle? Because at the end of the day, you know, um, we just met with a lot of USAID folks down in DC, and they are now, you know, they are really, uh, you know, with uh, President Obama and you know, Raji Shaw, pushing the Feed the Futures program. So they're country owned, you know, really talking about accountability and transparency and country led agendas for development, especially uh, including agriculture. But again, at the end of the day, my question is, and, uh, and I've learned from my colleagues, yes, the nations are, are recognized to some degree by now our developed governments. But what happens when those nations' agendas are different or in direct opposition to the people's agendas? Mm -hmm. You know, the indigenous people say, that we, can, we don't need the Walmarts in this world. We don't need... You know, you're saying you're creating jobs. You know, we're looking at a system and we are, a lot of the major donors and the foundations are pushing for this private public partnerships and creating the environment. And, in the, in the, and it's, what's ironic is that we as the civil society NGOs come up with these wonderful vocabulary, sustainability, enabling environments. And a few months down the line, I see these same words being used by the multinational corporations. So the enabling environment of the companies to make profits in those, in those uh, countries that they want to work. I am not for companies making profits, but at what expense? At whose rights, trample, trampling of whose rights are those you know, agendas being um, set forth? And I guess my um, biggest conflict is, you know, the United Nations and a lot of us in this work do some great, like you like said, wordsmithing of setting um, great <coughs> papers 
two and two to bear. But um, in the field, when we are visiting these countries and really working on the ground with the communities, they don't know what the national uh, strategy for nutrition is. All they know is they're hungry. Okay, how can we help people put food on their tables without, in a way that enables um, the environmental, you know, sustainability in ways that will help them be able to do that in a dignified way. And, you know, we are getting driven by the agendas of our donors. They want outcomes and indicators in, in one year sometimes, or in maximum maybe three to five years. But real accompaniment development, we know. You don't see the fruits of it until at least 10 years. And so how can we change the dynamics of that thinking and language, and think outside the box to say, what is it that we really need to do? And not about putting money into putting down papers, because you know we've spent a lot of money helping you know with the thousand days and the, you know scale of nutrition. We're saying nutrition is an important indicator and should be all of our aid programming. So now all the countries have these great national plans, but when we talk to the NGOs and the faith-based organizations on the ground, we say there's no money for us to do the programming. So how can we deliver it? So there's a myriad of issues, but you know I think. The bottom line is who is driving that agenda? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about enabling, are we, when we're enabling environments for uh, companies to make money?